Hello. I've got with me today The Unworthy Thor. This was written by Jason Aaron, art by Oliver Copel, or Copiel, Kim Jacento, or Jacento, not sure how you pronounce that, and Matthew Wilson. Now, this is a book that I've really been wanting to read ever since I saw the promotion poster for it at my local comic book store. And thankfully now, I have come into position of the all five issues in one book. And uh, I kind of wanted to give my thoughts on it. Uh, the direction of the art, some of the themes or tones of the story. Uh, so... For any that have been out of the Thor and or Marvel loop, the unworthy Thor continues on an arc uh, of Thor, now the Odin son, no longer being worthy to wield his hammer, and the hammer is now in the hands of Jane Foster, who is the current Thor. In the unworthy Thor, Odinson is visited by an entity known as the Unseen, who tells him of another hammer that belonged to a Thor from a different universe within the Marvel multiverse, and that universe has long since passed. Everyone's dead, but the Mjolnir of that universe somehow survived and made it into Odinson's universe. With the desire to be worthy again, Odinson goes on a search of the hammer. Along the way, he encounters other people who also want the hammer some being The Collector and Thanos, and that's just a brief summary. I think I'll talk about the art first, and as this carries on, I'll go into some other thoughts I have. The art is really good. It meets the standard of most comics being made today. It has a few moments where the art is completely different, such as this flashback, if I'll just give me a moment to... Uh, find it for you. There we go. This flashback here with uh, Thor and his mother Freya or Frigga. Um, the art there looks completely different from other moments in in the comic. And it was pretty interesting to see. It definitely had a smoother feel to it and probably appropriate for the moment that they were trying to see uh, they were trying to have in this like flashback um, personally though what does it for me is the composition of each page I just really like the planning that went into some of the pages really before anything else stuck out to me before I knew really anything about the story of unworthy Thor it was the front cover that that really stuck out to me. The front cover that was the promotion poster that I saw on my comic book store many, many months ago. Um, it The front cover especially just gives me this vibe of uh, a fantasy game, like playing Skyrim. Uh, You've got the character decked out, you know, like Thor's like this character that's like decked out in all this gear with the hood and the cape and got the axe in one hand and reaching out for this other Mjolnir with the with his free hand and uh, it just reminds me of like when you're playing as your custom character with all these gear and weapons and after all that shit you had to go through to get to the treasure, it's finally there. And all you have to do is reach out and take it. And um, that was a really good. Other scenes that really did it for me was like this scene here with Beta Ray Bill uh, offering his hammer to Thor when he learned that uh, Thor could not wield Mjolnir anymore. And the composition in that was really good. I really liked it. Um, and I believe after this one, they present uh, something a little more similar in the next issue. And it that composition just looks really good. I really 
enjoyed uh, some of these moments and the moments that you see in these comics could only have really been brought out by the superb artistic skills behind this book um, to really bring out the moments, the moments that I felt in this uh, cover that was the poster long ago and um, just further moments along in the comic. The next thing I wanted to talk about was the direction of the story and for this one I think I'm gonna start closer to the end. So it's been a big mystery for those who have been paying attention to the story. What did Nick Fury whisper into Thor's ear that made him unworthy? Well, this book finally brings that to light. Towards the end of the fifth issue, what Fury whispered to Thor is Gore was right. Gore, the God Butcher, was an antagonist of a previous Thor comic who had it out for the gods. And Thor, now Odinson, explains the meaning, saying that gods are vain and vengeful, that mortals could be better off without them. He says that the gods are unworthy, all of them, they including himself, are not worthy of the mortals' love, and after finishing this book, that conclusion that Odinson came to after the whole adventure, it really had me thinking about some deeper meaning beyond, behind that. From a religious and or ideological perspective, gods, whether one or many, are meant to be all-powerful. They can't be bested and nothing is above them. To call, there's nothing above them to call judgment on them. But the ending of The Unworthy Thor would say otherwise, and I kind of see Thor losing his hammer, his, his ability to wield Mjolnir, as like a sign or the beginning of all the gods in the Marvel Universe losing their worth to be gods. The concept of that is, well, it's something to ponder on over. That for so long, beings with power have been at the height of their game, but now they're being cut down to size because they just sit on their power, being vain, using their power only in wrath, and not for some greater good to benefit the people they live, that live under them. And now these gods have to get down from their pedestal and see things from below. That, I feel, could almost be... Uh, applicable to just occupations in general, especially occupations where one leads people or they are of a higher rank than them. Just being at that rank isn't enough to keep you constantly, uh, you, ha you constantly have to show that you are deserving of the position that you have, but when it becomes apparent that you are just sitting on that position, people will start to wonder if you are really as good now as you were before. And maybe people in power need to go down a notch to see things from the perspective of the people they lord over. But that's just more of the feeling I got from what Odinson says at the end of the story. And it's definitely something I encourage anyone to ponder over. Uh, maybe for anyone out there, they might come to their own conclusion about how about the way Unworthy Thor ended. However, at the very end of The Unworthy Thor, none of the figures known to us claim the other Mjolnir. Not Odinson, not the Collector, not the minions of Thanos, but rather an unknown, an unknown character, who, as they are picking up Mjolnir, they call themselves the War Thor. And that's how the story ends. I believe the ending to The Unworthy Thor is meant to give us a little hint at a new villain to come in a new series, so this story was just more or less build up to something else. Still a very enjoyable read. I recommend giving The Unworthy Thor a look. It's just five issues, so not a long series to commit to. And with that, those are my thoughts on The Unworthy Thor. I hope that this was insightful or entertaining or really whatever you wanted it to be, and I'll see you next time with something else to look at. Until then.